What's up all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and better late than never, I'm going to be doing a look at my haul for the month of December of 2020. So let's do this thing. And welcome back everybody. Now this is a Christmas haul. This is my haul that of stuff I bought. Some of these books I've done overviews of. So if you're interested in some of these books, I'll let you know which ones I've done overviews of, and you can uh, check the channel for that. Usually under omnibus reviews or hardcover reviews, we have different playlists. Um, if you're new to the channel and you're just checking out my hauls, please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing and hit that like button. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about some of these books I got. Actually, all the books that I got. Uh, in detail. So let's look at seconds first. So here's a book I bought because so many of you all recommended it to me. This is Brian Lee O'Malley's um, book called Seconds. Now Brian Lee O'Malley is the gentleman that did the uh, Scott Pilgrim uh, book. Oh man. And there's a Scott Pilgrim limited run edition on the Switch game coming out this Friday. But anyway, uh, he did Scott Pilgrim and then this is Seconds. My wife and I have already read this and we're going to do a video review on it if you want to find out exactly our thoughts. But pretty much it's about a young lady that wants to open up a restaurant and she wants to call it Katie's. She owns this place or she co-owns this place called Seconds. And she finds a magical mushroom, <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, um, that gives her the ability to travel back in time or to undo a day and start over anew. So she writes her mistakes down, eats the mushroom, goes to sleep, and wakes up in a brand new day. So it's kind of like Run Lola Run um, or the what was the Netflix show that just came out recently, the, the Russian... Uh, doll nesting doll. I can't remember what it's called. I didn't watch it, but that's what it sounds like But I really enjoyed it and if you want to know our thoughts, we'll be doing a uh, Review of it on the channel. So keep an eye on the channel now My wonderful wife got me you have killed me by James rich and Joel Jones And this is looks to be older Joel Jones artwork just based on her style especially her style that I'm familiar with now so this is a crime noir detective story and I forgot I had picked it up and started reading it. For some reason, I stopped, probably because I got distracted with something else that was uh, coming out at the time, or an old reader, new reader. And this is what the artwork looks like. So I'm really looking forward to this. I love when she buys me things that I've never heard. I've never heard of this book. So I love when she finds me things like this. She also did an amazing job with this, thanks to my buddy Gio at A Week in Geekdom sheets i love this book this was one of my favorite reads of 2020 i read it all in one day actually in just a couple of hours it's a beautiful book about a little girl that's lost her mother and works at a laundromat with her dad or her dad owns the laundromat and then about a little ghost that wants to cross over into the human world and they both become friends if you will uh, but this is what the artwork looks like I, I love it it's easy to follow it's very colorful and it's got a beautiful story. And so it brought some tears to my eyes. Uh, especially, you know, when she talks about her mom. And if she's ever going to see her mom. Um, and talking to the to the ghost about her mom. So I really enjoyed it. I It's in my top 10 reads of 2020. If you've not read it. It's brought, I think it was Oni Press. Or no, Karakal is the publisher. But, I mean, it's cheap enough for anybody to try out. The paperback version is only $12.99. And that's retail. All right, first, big shout out to my buddy Ray, who got me. He know like Ray knows me so well. Um, I don't really showcase these when I do my walkthrough of my uh, of my comics and my collected editions, but I do collect the Peanuts box set, and I was missing two. I was missing 1959 and 1962, and then 1963 to 1966, and he got me one of them. I think they were out of print, or they were out of print for a long time, and he was able to uh, find me this one. Uh, this brings back a lot of memories because I read this stuff, and then my daughter, my oldest daughter, Lydia, who's been on the channel, Miss Lydia, has read all of this like every one of my peanuts collections because i had the single volumes but you all know me as a complete as i have to have the rest in box set format but she has read all of them from when they started in 1950 all the way up until 2000 uh, when charles passed away so 
this brings me so much joy that I finally have the box set. And thank you so much, Ray. This was a Christmas gift from him, and it came in. And we do a opening of what's in the box every Saturday on our Q&A for whatever, uh, whenever people send us stuff. And we have a P.O. box, and that's in the description of this video. But that's where he sent it, and man, I was just, I was surprised that he even remembered which uh, box sets I was missing, because I, I haven't updated that video in a couple of years. That was my very first walkthrough video, and that was back in 2017, I think. But yes, this is the complete Peanuts box set, 1959 and 1962. Next up, I ended up ordering myself the Asterix hardcovers. This is from Paper Cut Studios. I hope they don't discontinue this line because they discontinued my Smurf line, but now they're coming up in like soft cover omnibus formats. But this is Asterix. It's also available in trade paperback format. I've not read a single page of this, and I'm so excited to dive in. I'm taking a break from old reader, new reader uh, for a while. And I mean, I'll, I'll come back to it. But one of the things that I wanted to do was start reading things, you know, that I wanted to read. And, and talk about it on the channel. But a lot of my subscribers, a lot of you wonderful folks that are subscribed to me are from Europe or from other countries and you always suggest these books to me. And Asterix has been on the top of my list. You all have not led me astray yet. I know I'm the one that tells people to read things and suggest things to people, but you also, if it wasn't for you all, I wouldn't have read you know, some of these books that were in my top 10 this year. So I started reading 1010 because of you all. I enjoyed the hell out of Judge Dredd because of you all. So I'm hoping uh, to see what Asterix is about. Because I know it's got a huge fan following. And man, I can already tell you right now, I think my biggest issue with at least this printing is going to be some of the letters <laughs> or following some of these word bubbles. Uh, just because they're very... Uh, they're very tiny, so a little hard to see. Or maybe it's just my old age, huh? It could be that. It could be that. I don't know. That looks pretty small. Not like the Tintin 10 small little uh, books, but still, it's kind of small. But I got the first three volumes. I think these are the only ones that are available. So, oh, damn it, of course they're out of order. Sometimes I leave things out of order on purpose to see who's paying attention to my videos. This time, however, I did not. It was not on purpose. Um, I, this, these are the only ones that are out so far. I'm sure they're going to continue this run depending on how well they sell. But each one of these was $22.99. And let's keep going. So my entire family knows how I feel about the Dark Crystal. They know that it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I was saddened to find out that Netflix canceled the Dark Crystal series after one season. It was so freaking awesome. It was so nice to see puppetry mixed with CG. <sighs> what are you going to do? Uh, so my brother got me, one of my brothers got me this, this set right here. The Bestiary, which is just the creatures from the Dark Crystal world. Now this bestiary is all drawn by Iris Compiet. Um, and I think, yeah, here we go. There's a forward here by Brian and Wendy Fraud. Uh, Brian, of course, being the lead artist on the original Dark Crystal. But it's just a bestiary talking about all the different creatures that live in this world, uh, the different sketches. Oh man, I, I love the Dark Crystals and I realized that it's a movie that's not for everybody, but this one here collects the creatures that are found in the one season TV show. I don't know. Now that Netflix cancels things, I wonder who else can pick it up, because it used to be the other way around. A show would get canceled, and Netflix is like, we'll pick it up. Now, damn it, I don't know. I think we're out of luck on that, but at least I got the comics. So I ended up buying myself Lady Mechanica Volume 2. I forgot that these were even a thing until my buddy, the Omni Dog, reminded me how much I love the first one. Um, actually, I got the first one when I was up visiting him in uh, Baltimore. I got it at the Baltimore Comic Con, and this is the follow-up. This is in hardcover. I believe there are four or five of these hardcovers so far. It's an ongoing series. It's steampunk. But the main reason I got it was because I'm a big fan of Joe Benitez's artwork. I've been following his work since his days on Top Cow, and then he went over to do some stuff for DC, and now he's doing his own thing. Uh, but the uh, this uh, hardcover does come with a dust jacket, 
and it's a beautiful hardcover. And it's all self-published. It's all by Benita Studios. So he himself is publishing it. And if you've not read it, uh, the main reason to get this series is for this beautiful freaking artwork. It is absolutely... I'm turning it like a manga. I anyway, not read it, so I can't flip too much through there. And speaking of manga... My wonderful cousin got me Clover, the collector's edition. Uh, this is all done by Clamp, which is a four-lady team that writes and draws manga. And as a matter of fact, X is one of my top 20 favorite manga of all time. So this collects all of Clover. It's been previously released by Tokyo Pop, uh, and then Dark Horse had an omnibus edition, and the omnibus was soft cover. And this is—I mean, this is a tall edition. This is a tall book. And let me show you a comparison to how big it is compared to a trade paperback. But here it is compared to a trade. So you can see how big it is, and it's a hardcover. Uh, this is published by Kodansha Studios, and this is a book that I have not read in years. I read them when they originally came out from Tokyo Pop. I believe there were a total of four of them. And I own the Omnibus Edition, but I just never got around to rereading it. And I think that's one of my one of my biggest problems is, like, I forget some of these books that I get. So, I'm trying to write down the things that I get so I can go back and read them and bump up that how much I've read of my library, that percentage. Because right now we're looking at about 65% of the books that I own I've read. And I want to get that back up to at least 80. So, we'll see. We'll see. Those are goals. So when I was doing the size comparison, I'm sure you noticed this, and this is Mark Miller and Sean Murphy's Chrononauts. Uh, the story itself is okay, but the artwork by Sean Murphy, it's one of the few books I did not own by him. It's about a couple of uh, douchebags that traveled through time. That's it. I mean, it's okay. Uh, but the main reason I bought this was because I'm a huge fan of Sean Murphy, and it's one of the few books that I didn't own with his artwork, so... I had read it before, and I think it was somebody lent me a copy, or I may have read it digitally. So, yeah, I bought some image books for my... Actually, I bought some trades for myself. So, and let me show you some more. I may have already had this, but this is Witches by Scott Snyder, and then Jock does the artwork. I could have sworn that I had this when somebody was asking me if Melanie could review Witches. I was like, yeah, sure, let me go find it. I couldn't find it. So... I ended up finding a copy at a local comic book shop. They had a sale on trade paperback, so I was like, all right, sure. Let's go ahead and buy it, because I cannot find my copy. And it's not the first time it's happened. That's what happened with my Booster Gold reading order, which is finally coming out tomorrow, by the way. Uh, that I, <laughs> for some reason, I misplaced two of my Booster Gold books, and they were necessary for the reading order. So I had to purchase them online, and they finally came in uh, this week, so I can finally do the Booster Gold reading order. So each month, as I mentioned on my previous videos, I have a poll up on our Patreon, and our Patreons get to vote on what the next reading order should be. And for the month of February, it was between the Marvel Cosmic Saga and Wonder Woman. And the Marvel Cosmic Saga won. So anyway, this is Witches. Also picked up Avengers of the Wasteland. This is a trade paperback collecting a miniseries by Ed Brezen. Um, and this is a miniseries focusing on the characters in the Old Man Logan world. So that's what this is. Characters from the Old Man Logan world that have taken up the, the mantle of all these old heroes. All these old Avengers. And I've not read this, but I've really enjoyed Ed Brisson's take on Old Man Logan and then his Dead Man Logan series. Hopefully we'll get an omnibus of that one day. And if we do, this should be collected in his Dead Man Logan series. So these all came from the trade paperback sale that the local comic shop had. This is another book I didn't have. This is the 4X. And this is the crossover between the Fantastic Four and the X-Men with Franklin Richards with black hair now because he dyed it. I guess. Uh, but this is not collected in the Dawn of X traits, which I've been enjoying the way they've, they've been collecting those. Um, this is a four-issue series that took place... I want to say this took place probably between issues four and five of the main ongoing series. That's where I would put it. Because, I mean, this, this immediately came out. This was announced with the first wave of Dawn of X books. So... It's artwork by Terry Dotson and my boy Chip Sadarsky wrote it. I didn't have it, so I was like, yeah, I gotta get this. So I have no idea what this is. I don't play League of Legends. I don't know who Zed is, but I did like Edgar Salazar's artwork. 
which led me to get this because it looked freaking cool. So this is League of Legends Zed. And man, that is some kick-ass artwork in here. No idea if the story is any good, but I don't know. It looked like a fantasy role-playing game, which I assume that's what League of Legends is, right? It's a phone. Is that the phone game? Man, I said, why do I sound like an old man? I swear. Is that the phone game? But anyway, that's Zed. So as you all know, I'm prepping for a comprehensive X-Men reading order, and I ended up getting some traits that I didn't have for some reason that were missing from my collections, like Amazing X-Men and then Adjectiveless X-Men uh, by Brian Wood and Mark Guggenheim. But I needed these because I'm pretty sure between X-Men and Superman, when, the, when our Patreons get to vote, that they're probably going to vote for the comprehensive reading order of X-Men, the updated reading order, which I'm including all the series, all the um, X-Men spin-off, or not the spin-offs, not, not the mini-series, but mainly the main series spin-offs, like when to read X-Factor. And I may do a separate video of that. All I know is this is going to take me a couple of months to do it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's going to beat out Superman reading order. So I'm just thinking ahead. And damn it, there's a remainder mark on this one. But I think I paid like three bucks for this. So not that big of a deal. Wasn't like it was my favorite run anyway. And all I'm going to do is uh, showcase the artwork and then talk about where it belongs in the reading order. Actually, this run wasn't terrible. And a big, huge thank you and shout out to my buddy Kid Flash. Who sends us artwork uh, that we put up on Saturdays in our P.O. box. By the way, if you want to send us something, yes, we have a P.O. box and that's in the description of the video. Um, but he sent us this so the Astonishing Melanie and I can review it. And this is Terry Moore's new book called Ever. I've not read it. I don't even know the premise. But he sent us a copy and sent Amazing Amanda a copy. So we're going to be reviewing that on the channel sometime. So thank you so much, Kid Flash. Big shout out and thank you to Ludwig Wayne. Oh my gosh, you beautiful bastard. So I have gone on how I much love Osama Tezuka. Osama Tezuka is one of my favorite manga creators of all time. Um, his work on Astro Boy, Blackjack, uh, Unico, just all that stuff is what I grew up with. And I have all his work that's been translated into English. With the exception of Phoenix, because I was for sure that Viz would re-release those trades as smaller format or in a hardcover format these days, and they have not. So, in uh, Mexico, this is where P Planeta Comic published these hardcovers, and so this is all in Spanish, Phoenix, Osama Tezuka. Muchas gracias, mi hermano. This is so cool. So I finally get, I've not read Phoenix. It's one of the works I haven't read because I was waiting for, uh, to get the English translations and yeah, never happened. And I never ran across a cheap set. And for those of you that collect Osama Tezuka's work, you know how rare and how expensive those books get when they go out of print. Every one of his books, not just Phoenix, but Phoenix is up there among some of his most expensive work. So this is really cool because it has colored artwork in here. And it has his black and white art. And it's also done in the traditional right to left format. So it's a hardcover book. Man, look, Viz, this is what you should publish. Something like this. People would buy this up. I mean, this is the god of manga. How do we not have this already reprinted? Uh, my wife got this for me for Christmas. This is Morning in America. This is one of the books that she picked up from Oni, Oni Press. No idea what this is about, but I really, really like this artwork. This has some really awesome and cute looking artwork. Um, she didn't know what it was about, but you had me with the artwork. So I'm going to read it going in completely blind. Um, I have no idea what this is about. If it takes, it looks like it might take place. No, I don't want to know. It looks like it takes place in the 80s, though. Sometimes it's better going in blind. I've, I've done an overview of this uh, Gotham by Gaslight from... My buddy at Dying Breed Collectors sent us a uh, sent me a copy of this because of my troubles trying to get it. So again, a big thank you to Dying Breed Collectors. And then we get to the Kyle pile. So Kyle sent me this box. A big shout out to my buddy Kyle. Um, this came on our Saturday uh, unboxing, but he knows I'm a big collector's edition. Um, you know, I, I collect collected editions, but he wanted to get me some books. 
that were single issues. So, got me a copy of Naomi Volume 1. He was like, I know you only get collected editions, but I want you to own some single issues. So, I mean, this is really cool. This was really awesome and sweet, and I was not expecting this. Like, he got me Skyward, and, I mean, Naomi, like, variant covers? That is so cool, man. Kyle, Kyle's my dude, and that is awesome, both of these covers. Even though we all know what happened, but anyway. And I've not read Void Trip. So that looks pretty interesting. And then this one here is signed. It's my dude. Now I got my copy of Criminal Volume 3 in. And how could I not put this in my best collected editions that came out in 2020? This is the return of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips with these characters that are not so beloved, but <laughs> because they're all gray characters. They're not all black and white. Some of them are gray. And now that was a nip slip, so I have to cover that up with... I'm sure some of you all have noticed, and I love when you all notice, that I put the Near Mint Condition logo over some of the nudity that are found in some of these books. Uh, but this is Criminal Volume 3, which I started to read uh, last week. And I also got Cruel Summer, which is kind of like Criminal Volume 3.5. It's not quite Criminal Volume 4 is the way that he put it. And for those of you that have been asking me, I've not read any of this, so i got to be careful flipping through here so I don't spoil anything. But for those of you that have been asking me about Criminal reprints, those are coming. Ed Brubaker said those are coming from Image in this format, in this hardcover uh, deluxe edition format. The original ones were printed by Icon, which was uh, Marvel. But they will be printed in this format. I think he said February or March is when those are coming. So keep an eye out wherever you get your comics. That's when Volumes 1 and 2 of Criminal in this format. And you know I'm an idiot, so I'm going to be purchasing them in this format, even though I have the Icon hardcovers. Um, but February or March, keep an eye out wherever you get your books. So I finally got in Justice League by Scott Snyder, Book 2. This is the Deluxe Edition. Comes with a dust jacket. Uh, collecting issues 14 through 25 of Justice League by Scott Snyder and annual number one. And damn, I forgot that. Let me see. This is, yeah, Segovia does the artwork. Jimmy Chung does the artwork in here. Jorge Jimenez. And I've not read this volume right here. I've only read the first volume. And yeah, it was it was good. It was solid. I, I dug it. I wasn't the biggest fan of Justice League during the Rebirth era uh, because of Brian Hitch's writing, but I did enjoy Scott Snyder's uh, book, so I look forward to reading this. And it's got wonderful... Man, he has got some talented artists on this book, too. Now, I think, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that we're going to need one more book to wrap up his, his run. Is that correct? Please leave those comments down below because I really I haven't kept up with Justice League. I keep up with it through deluxe editions or trade paperbacks. So I really I really don't know if we need another book or if this wraps up his run. But here is Justice League. Oh, Francis Manipool? Damn, that's cool. I love Francis Manipool. And then James Tinian is also one of the writers. Batmite? Dude, you had me at Francis Manipool and Batmite. That's what's up. And, and you have James Tinian writing it. This book retails for $39.99, by the way, for those wondering. And, man, Jorge Jimenez's artwork. I'm glad that guy's blown up and he's on a flagship title now. Now, I've done overviews of Injustice Volume 2, Nightwing, and Batman, Detective Comics, The Rise and Fall of the Batman. So, if you go through our videos and look at different playlists, there's a video playlist called Omnibus Reviews, and you can find them through there. But I have not done an overview of this wonderful gift right here. So Mike Firth, a huge thank you to you, brother. I was not expecting this at all. It came during our live show on Saturday. I It was a huge box, and I was like, what the hell is in the box? And I thought he just sent me the box of ID, uh, uh, IDW's Life and Time of Scrooge McDuck Artist Edition just the empty box to mess around with me but no he actually got me this wonderful artist edition and if you all know me i do not follow or get artist editions because it's a rabbit hole i didn't want to uh jump into and this beautiful bastard got this for me knowing that I, now i'm gonna have to seek out a couple of others i mean it's a big book but to have Don Rosa's original artwork like this, I mean, it's not original, right? It's a, it's a reprint of his original art. 
in the format, in the size that he drew it in. It's just so cool. And for anybody that has been watching my channel for a while, you all know how I feel about Don Rosa's Scrooge comics, or Duck comics, rather, and how much I love the life and times of Scrooge McDuck. Like, this to me is the epitome of his run. This to me is one of the best comic books ever written and drawn. And there's a lot of things that happen here in Kentucky, too, that he drew in there, like the uh, Kentucky River. Shout out, huh? That was pretty cool. If, if you live in Kentucky, you recognize a lot of the places that he drew. But this collects some of the issues from that 12-issue uh, event. And it's pretty much exactly what it says it is. It is the life and times of Scrooge McDuck. It goes from the beginning of his life, how he got to America. Um, all the Well, you know what? It's one of my favorite endings of all time, so you can find out for yourself if you've never read it. I know that Fanagraphics has reprinted the box sets from Don Rosa, and I know they've reprinted the Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. But please, in the comments down below, let me know if it's out of print again, and I will be happy to let them know to bring that back into print if you're curious about reading uh, this book. But this is what the Artist Edition looks like. Now, let me just give you an example. Just to kind of give you an idea of what the size is like, this is the Fanagraphics collection of the box set of Don Rosa, uh, not the life and times of Scrooge McDuck, but kind of give you an idea of what the original art looked like compared to the finished product. Here, we'll flip just a couple more pages. Just that panel and this panel right here, how much bigger it is, the amount of details you can tell in each coin uh, before the color touches it, right? I think you learn to appreciate the art so much more, like the amount of details in the clouds and the sky here, we'll do a comparison, than you do when it's colored. Not that the color takes anything away, but as you learn to appreciate the artist, you learn to appreciate how much time it takes them to draw these things. So I think that's really cool. And again, an unexpected, wonderful gift from Mike Firth. Thank you so much. And that, as they say, is that. Now, some of these books are available from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off. Retail price, Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you Minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my final haul for 2020. Let me know in those comments down below what you picked up and what you're hoping to pick up this year. I did a video of my most anticipated collected editions coming out in 2021, and I would love to know what you all are looking forward to or what your most favorite books were in 2020. Wait, I've done that video too. So... Um, never mind. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to hit like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. More importantly, please all of you stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.